Bangladesh's prime minister has been re-elected following a vote the country's opposition branded a sham. The opposition boycotted the election after Hasina refused to set up an independent commission to oversee it. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina's ruling party won the vast majority of seats in parliament to secure a fourth straight term in power. These residents in Bangladesh's capital, Dhaka, are frustrated. After 15 years of Sheikh Hasina's leadership, they were hoping for change. It doesn't matter if I vote or not in this election. It's a farce of an election, as if it were a local vote. It never looked like a national election to me. The government needs to get inflation under control. It's crazy. And I ask them to lower taxes and provide help to poor people. We don't want anything else, no matter who is in power. It was an election marred by controversy and violence. The main opposition Bangladesh Nationalist Party branded the elections a sham. The BNP held mass protests ahead of the election and told its supporters to boycott the vote. They insist that Hasina's crackdown on political rivals ensured that her re-election was a foregone conclusion. Hasina dismissed this criticism and defended her goals as a re-elected leader. Listen, I, I, have, I have nothing to say. Those who want to criticize, they can criticize. It is their liberty. It is their liberty. I have my own belief, whether it is right or wrong. I believe that and I trust on that. I trust on myself that, yes, I have done the right thing and the election was free and fair. The boycott of the election by the BNP was one of the reasons that voter turnout was much lower than for the previous election. But the smaller number of people who did vote ended up tightening Hasina's grip on power. We're joined now by South Asia expert Michael Kugelman. He is the deputy director of the Asia program at the Wilson Center in Washington, D.C. Thank you for joining us here on DW News. Um, so an election without opposition, and yet the government claims that it is free and fair. Do you agree? I don't. Um, by definition, it's very hard to have a fair election when the main uh, opposition party does not participate. And, you know, you look at who was participating in this election be besides the ruling party. Uh, there was one other uh, uh, political party that's fairly prominent, but it's fairly aligned with the ruling party. Then there were a small number of um, other opposition parties that are quite weak. And then there were a bunch of independent candidates that are, that are aligned with the ruling party. So essentially, the ruling party was running against itself. I don't see how you can call that a free and, uh, and fair election, not to mention the climate that played out in Bangladesh in the weeks and months before the election, which presented a non-level playing field that, quite frankly, made it difficult for any party wanting to oppose the ruling party to mount via a, a, a viable campaign. So, I mean, but, you know, how is this any different from the last elections, first of all? And second of all, you know, with Bangladesh looking like a deeply divided country, what does it mean for the prime minister's ability to now govern? Well, it's very different from the previous election, because the previous election in 2018, the main opposition party, the BNP, uh, did participate, and it lost, uh, though that was an election that was widely viewed by international observers as rigged, because the ruling party got about 96 percent of the vote, which is quite a lot. Um, so it was, it was quite different. And in fact, that's one reason why the BNP decided to boycott this election. It thought that it made a mistake the last time to run in, in, a, in an election against a broader backdrop of a system that it believed to be rigged. What this means for Sheikh Hasina and her governance moving forward, I think that there's a key challenge here for um, uh, the political environment on the whole. It's going to be very tense. The BNP is very angry, very aggrieved. It never wanted this election to happen the way it did. So I think that for Sheikh Hasina, a big challenge will be managing the risks of unrest and political violence. The second big governance challenge for her is the economy. It's been sputtering, inflation, debt have been rising. And she's going to have to be very careful with that because she has always staked her claim to be a successful leader on the fact that she presided over significant levels of economic growth. And yet that's now coming into doubt.
Okay, so that's the situation domestically. Um, what does the election mean when we talk about geopolitics, the broader region, for example? I mean, you're speaking with us from Washington. Well, I mean, the first thing that's very notable is that within hours after the election result was declared, the ambassadors of India, China, and Russia all um, congratulated Sheikh Hasina. And that reflects something important, that really all of the, ma the, the non-Western major powers uh, in the world are very happy to work with her. In contrast to the U.S. and other countries in the West that, of course, have expressed concerns about democratic backsliding in Bangladesh and had called for free and fair elections are likely to be disappointed. So I think there is that question about how will the West respond, particularly the U.S. It does have the capacity to hit back hard with trade sanctions, which would be devastating for Bangladesh, given that the West and particularly the U.S. are key a key destination for Bangladesh's exports. But even the Western countries view Bangladesh as a strategic, a strategically significant state. Being in the middle of the Indo-Pacific region, it's become a key battleground for India-China competition. So I think even the West will be careful and might think twice before deciding to respond with harsh policies. Michael Kugelman, Deputy Director of the Asia Program at the Wilson Center. Thank you.